Okay, what's going on, everyone? In this video, we're looking at the MLB slate for Thursday, August 27th. We have a nice seven-game slate tonight. Uh, we don't know what's going to happen in the NBA, so probably not going to have a game today as well. So, make a baseball video, why not? So, let's get started. So, we appreciate you to hit the like on the video and subscribe if you have not already. Starting off at pitcher, as always, our first, we'll look at some of the stacks that I like. So... I always like to go to Fantasy Lab. You can see all the totals are the all the projected lineups all on one page. Uh, so the one the main slate we're talking about is one that starts at six thirty seven. Uh, the Nationals are facing off against Spencer Howard. The Phillies, one of their better prospects, he actually pitched decent in his most recent outing. He went only went like three and two thirds, but had his best sh start uh, against the Blue Jays. Before that, he kind of got hit by the uh, hit up a little bit by the Mets and Braves. So I think he's going to get better. I'm not that into a national stack. I think a couple of pieces look decent, like Soto's just been having a great year, and Eaton is just really, really cheap. Uh, one of my favorite stacks is the Blue Jays facing off against Chris uh, Mazza. The Blue Jays have just been hitting so many bombs recently. Like Grichik has been on an unbelievable tear. Tiasker has like 11 bombs. Telez has so much power. Finally, Lourdes Gurriel is hitting bombs, so... So much power for them. Also, Kevin Biggio at the top of the order has so much power. Facing off against a pretty bad pitcher in Mazza. If you look at the stats, he's giving up uh, for his career. It's only a pretty small sample size, but he's given up almost a 600 slugging to lefties, 400 plus to righties. Opponents are hitting well over 300 against him. The XFIP is also incredibly high, especially to lefties. If you just look at his stuff, even in AAA, he was... I mean, he's been in AAA for a long time. He's not a very young kid. He's 30 years old. So most recently in the Mets AAA, he had a decent ERA, 3.67. But as you can, looking for the strikeout numbers for him. Uh, here we go. Strikeout numbers weren't very high in AAA, just 7.34. His XFIP was also like hovering around 4 or 5 in the AAA, so... Not only is he not that good of a pitcher, the Red Sox have one of the worst bullpens in baseball, like behind the Phillies. So, stack up the Blue Jays. Then I like the Ray stack as well. John Means has not been looking too hot to start the year. He missed his first start with some fatigue. And then, just ever since he's been back, he just hasn't been doing anything. He's giving up a ton of power. He's going to have four home runs in like nine innings. ERA is above 10. I like the... Raise a little bit against means, especially some of the powerful hitters like uh, Brousseau and Hunter Renfro. Also have some cheap options like Yandy Diaz. And I'm not that interested in any stack. We'll, we'll see who's pitching for the Mets, but I don't think I really want to stack the Mets against uh, Sixto Sanchez. Uh, you could look at some of the Twins. I think they're decent against Boyd. Boyd's been looking a little bit better recently, but he still gives up a ton of power. Uh, so the favorite stack for me is the Blue Jays, followed by the Rays, then the A's, and then probably mix in some like one-offs from like some other teams if I really wanted to go there. Starting off at pitcher for some of my for on um, this slate, we have Scherzer at 10-9. There's like not that many top-end pitching options. You have Scherzer. We don't know if Kershaw is going to pitch today. Uh, Ryu, just too expensive, 97. Uh, and then I'm not pay, paying that much for a Dobnak who just doesn't have strikeout upside. 16 Ks and 30 innings. Yeah, that's not going to get the job done. Uh, Bassett looks decent, but 86 is kind of priced where he should be, maybe even a little bit overpriced. So go with Scherzer as my SP1, and then my SP2, I think, uh, look at like Sixto Sanchez. Has pretty good strikeout stuff. Uh, he was one of the Philly's best prospects. They traded him to the Marlins for JT Real Muto, finally getting his big league chance. He was... Very good in his first start. Only needed 66 pitches to get through five innings. Could see that go up to like maybe 80 pitches in the second start. Price tag is super cheap. So you're not looking for much. You don't need too much out of him. And you'll definitely like to pay up for hat for some expensive hitters. And you'll definitely, um, you know, probably be one of the better point per dollar plays if he does go five, six innings. So looking at some of the hitters today. First base, Matt Olson looks really nice. He's expensive at 53. But he definitely looks appealing. Uh, Brousseau looks good. He's probably going to be batting like first or second in the lineup today against a lefty. Uh, Vlad Guerrero looks fine at his price point. 
Uh, looks like the model they might be facing Giselman, so you know Aguilar and VR are like the only two hitters that I would target for the Marlins if, when I usually play them, not that often. Uh, and then not too much cheap options that look incredibly appealing. So this position, I think I might just go all the way up and get Matt Olson against Jordan Lyles. Uh, Matt Olson, he usually gonna just hope that he hits a home run. He doesn't hit for a high average. He has crushed against Texas. Uh, for whatever, for what it's worth, he has four bombs in six games against them. And we know Jordan Lyles' his struggles are against uh, lefties. And Olsen is like one of the few lefties in the lineup. So I feel pretty good about uh, targeting him. So far this year, he's been awful against righties. Been decent against lefties, but every... It's been a small sample size. Go back to 2019, give like 555 slugging to lefties. 2018 was 301 slugging. It's actually decent, but 2017 getting crushed against lefties. Oh, it's kind of been up and down, but for his career, it's a 464 average or slugging given up to lefties. The XFIP career-wise is 5.0, so that's more telling. Uh, definitely like Matt Olson, especially going cheap as my SP2. I'll have some ability to pay up for some expensive hitters. At uh, second base, I like uh, Brousseau at 47. Normally gets like some interest for me whenever he's facing a lefty. He's usually when he's in the lineup. He has done pretty well against lefties this year, and last year he was decent against lefties too. So when he gets the opportunity, not afraid of means. He just hasn't looked that good. He hasn't looked sharp at all this year. He had a good last season. Thought he might be able to build off of that, but just hasn't been able to get the job done. So far in 33 at bats against or 30 at bats against lefties, he has seven extra base hits, three home runs, hitting 367 uh, with a. 800 slugging and a 433 ISO. He also strikes out like 30%, but Means isn't a high strikeout guy, so don't have to worry about that too much. And then even last season, he had four home runs and just 70 at bats, had 300 against lefties. So, Brusso looks like a very, very nice play. And now we go into the outfield where I'll target some of the potent Blue Jays hitters. I definitely like Gritchick at 3,900. He's just been on an unbelievable tear. Five home runs in 10 games. He has three straight multi-hit games. His batting average is up over 300 now, eight home runs. He's just been doing everything recently. Uh, he hits lefties well. He hits righties pretty well. I mean, he has power to both sides of the plate. Not that worry about um, as at all. The Red Sox bullpen is also awful. So I could see, could see uh, Gritchie carry his hot, uh, his hot hitting. In the month of August, he's batting uh, 297. Uh, so far, so now I mean, we only had three games in July, so not too much to take from that. But he's been very good against lefties this year. He's still been decent against righties with four home runs. Overall, the hard hit rate is about fifty percent. He gets a bunch of fly balls. I think he looks great. And then T. Oscar has just been hitting the cover off the ball the entire year. Eleven home runs, only nineteen RBI. So that kind of tells you that he's usually just hitting home runs, not hitting much of anything else. But I'll take it. He's still batting 294. He also has a ton of power to both sides of the plate. He's batting. See his stats for this year. His splits this season, he's batting 308 against righties with seven home runs. He has a 321 ISO. Also strikes out at a decent clip, but 65.5% uh, hard hit rate. He's just hitting the cover off the ball. They also are pretty inexpensive at 39 and 4300. The two hottest hitters on the team uh, feel pretty good about getting both of them in there. So that's kind of what I'm looking at for the DK side. Let's jump over to FanDuel. All right, over on FanDuel, it's kind of the same players and the stacks that I like on DraftKings. Nothing too drastic has changed. At pitcher, there's not like, I'm just playing Max Scherzer. Uh, he has the highest chance of being the highest scoring pitcher on the slate. There's not like there's a super expensive stack. It's not like there's a core stack that I want to get to. Uh, the Blue Jays are also pretty easy to get to on FanDuel. The Rays are super easy to get to. So I like those two teams quite a bit. I like a couple of the um, Oakland bats. Going to start with Matt Olson again at first base. Second base, uh, Brousseau is probably the first guy that I really like. Like first guy that I would probably play on FanDuel. He's just super cheap. 2500 for a guy that's... Going to be probably batting leadoff. Amazing numbers against lefties. And he's facing a pretty a pretty bad one so far this year in John Means. And then in the outfield, you have T. Oscar. 
He's 36. He's expensive, but it's easy to get to. Tiasker and Gritchick, just going back to those guys, feel like all four of these hitters have a chance to hit a home run today, especially like Gritchick and Tiasker, the way they've been going. Olsen, all he does is hit home runs. And uh, Brusso has a ton of power to lefty, so still leaves you with like 2,900 left. You can fill it out with some more Blue Jays, some Rays, you know, maybe mix in some Twins if you want. So, you know, that's kind of it. I like the seven-game slate. There's not too much to uh, to consider. Fandle's only six games. It's pretty weird, but uh, overall, it's not like we're dealing with 13 games, so which can kind of get overwhelming at times, but I like this medium-sized slate. So that's it for this one. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. I'll be back tomorrow maybe with an NBA video depending on how, you know, if the meeting goes well today. We'll see. If not, I'll be back with a baseball video. So thanks for watching and uh, good luck today.